Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Mr. Smitty here. Uh, just today, we're actually going to be looking at the next lab in a series of labs I've been doing. This one's going to focus on conditional statements, which are if-else statements. Uh, so, so far, we've been looking at loops. We're going to take a step back and just revisit those if-else. So today's lab is called Vending Machine. I like this lab a lot because it's it's a simulation um, between the user interaction of a real world machine like a vending machine. We've all had a pocket full of change and you walk by a vending machine, you look in there and you see the Reese's, you pull out your 85 cents, put them in the machine, or if you have a dollar, you put your dollar in and you get your change and your Reese's. So the purpose of today is to program a lab um, that will simulate this human interaction. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and pull up NetBeans. So we've got two things today. We've got NetBeans and we've also got the lab. So I've got the lab pulled up also. So we're going to first start our project and then we're going to take a look at the lab. So in NetBeans, remember that if you go up here to the gold box, gold box with the green plus, that's for a new project. So we're going to click on that. Make sure we have Java application selected. And then I'm just going to name it Vending Machine Video because I'm making a video. So once that loads up, I'm going to go ahead and delete the extra, all the extra generated comments that NetBeans gave me so that I have enough room for this video. And now we are ready to go. So I'm going to pull up the lab and it reads, you've got some money and you want to buy some candy. So you go up to the candy machine put in your money, select your candy, and then pick up your candy and your change. Sounds simple, huh? So I've given a couple examples of output here. Um, my vending machine is a candy machine. When you go through this lab, I strongly encourage you to be creative. Maybe you do Pokemon cards. Uh, you could do Funko Pops. Um, be creative and do, you know, maybe it could be a Chick-fil-A vending machine and you have all the different uh, menu items. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with the candy just because that's how the lab's written and, you know, um, I like to follow the directions, but I do encourage you to be, um, creative. So it looks like we're going to have to print out the title of our vending machine, ask for some information, print out a menu, take their selection and then return the change. So below down here, we actually have the instructions. So need some help getting started? Here's a guide to one possible solution. So there's lots of solutions, but I'm going to try to follow this one. Remember, there are several ways to solve any programming problem. We know that. All right, so prompt the user for the amount of money they are going to put into their canning machine. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is do this welcome um, print statement, and then I'm going to ask the person how much money they have. So doing my welcome so uh, welcome statement to vending machine so just gonna do a print line welcome to Smitty's candy machine we got the sweetest candy in town all right so there you go just a just a nice little welcome stream uh, welcome uh, statement so now we need if we look back at the lab we need to ask the person how much money they got so to do that whenever you're asking for user information scanner so I'm not gonna list out the comments because we've done this so many times in my videos but import java.util.scanner is step one. Then you have to create the scanner, make it static because it's outside of the main math method and our main method is static. So we actually have to make it static so that we can use it globally throughout our program. Uh, all right, so that's it. All right, import, create scanner. Step three is prompt user. So prompt for user information. So that's what we're going to do right here. How much money do you have? So 
I made this print line just out of habit. I'm going to remove the print. I'm going to remove the LN from print LN. So they have to type right after my question. All right. And now we need to store. So actually, technically, this is prompt and store for user information. So money. Think to myself, primitive types. I've got an int, double, boolean, byte, char, float, long. Money is usually a double because it's a decimal. So double, I'm going to say cash. Yeah, we'll go with cash. Is equal to our scanner dot next double because our type has to match our scanner method. All right, so at this point, we've done the beginning. Prompt the user for an amount of money. So use a method. So this means we're going to have to create a whole other method. We've been working in the main method. We need to create a method above it. All right, so use a method to provide the user with types of candy available in the machine and their respective prices. Return the cost of their candy. Okay, so again, right here, main method. It's asking us to create our own method above it, which is called modularity. So this will be a method to display uh, item choices. All right, so whatever's in the vending machine. So it's going to be a public method. It's going to have a return type of double because we want to return the price, I think, right? Uh, yeah, we want return the cost of their candy. So our return type, if you remember when you set up a method, you have your uh, your uh, public, your identifier here, so public, private, protected. Then you have your return type, so we want money is going to be our answer, a decimal, so we want double, and then we just name it. So public double uh, display menu is what I'm going to call mine. So on the display menu, we know at the end we have to ha return some double here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write the return, but it's going to be mad until we actually have a variable name. So inside of here, we'll just call it price. And then at the end, we're going to return a price. So we can actually set price to be negative 1 because if you look at the lab, it says return the cost of their candy or negative 1 if they made an invalid choice. So they're either going to make a correct choice or an invalid choice. So we can go ahead and set it negative 1 and assume that unless they make a valid choice, we'll just return negative 1. So, here we go. Oh, display choices is what it tells you. All right, so display choices. All right, so remember our main method is static, so our other methods also have to be static. So I apologize, but make sure you go back up here and do public static double display choices. All right, because our main method is static. All right, so in here, uh, we, we're just going to follow these directions. You get to decide what your candy machine has and how much each item costs. You must have at least five items. So for mine, I'm going to copy and paste. So I'm going to follow my thing and say I'm going to follow my directions. Well, let, well, here's what I have. All right, so just prompt, you know, just let them know. All right, well, this is what I've got. All right, then my next line will say, um, take a look at it. So we need a letter, a price, and a name. So I'm going to say A, and you could do number, price, it's whatever you want. Um, I'm going to say $1.25. For a Snickers. All right, and y'all know me. Love to copy and paste, right? Speeds things along. So I told you that you need to have five, at least five choices. You can have more. So we're gonna have A, B, C, D, E. I'm gonna have a Snickers, a Twix, a Reese's. Um, you know, we might have some Oreos. Those are, those are more cookies and candy, but Oreos, um, and then some Skittles. 
right, Skittles are like 85 cent. Uh, we'll go dollar fifty five. Why not seventy five for the Twix? Cause there's two of them, and maybe a dollar, even two dollars on the Reese's, cause that's that good candy. All right, so we have we have displayed our menu. So now after we display our menu, prompt the user for which piece of candy they would like. So we need to pr ask them which piece of candy would you like. So I'm actually going to put in a space between that. So I'm just going to do an empty print statement. And then I'm going to ask which candy would you like to purchase? Remember, if you're doing Pokemon cards, whatever you're doing, you know, make sure you. Um, I'm going to change this from print line to print because I want to type right next to it. Um, but make sure you make this work. You don't have to do candy. I would prefer you not to do candy so you can have a little creativity in it. So now we need to store their answer. So go back up here, and I'm going to say string choice is equal to empty string. Well, no. You know, I'm not even going to make that at the top. I'm going to do it down here. So string choice is equal to keyboard.next. Right, I'm using .next because we don't want the whole line. We just want the one thing they enter, which will be the letter. All right. Um, so which candy would you like to purchase? I'm even going to put in here the letter. All right. So in case they put in lowercase, I'm even going to use the dot to uppercase method so I'm scanning in the letter then I'm making it uppercase so that way we can just only deal with uppercases we don't have to worry about upper and lower all right so we have their choice a b c d e so the next thing our lab asks us to do return the cost so Basically, now we need to check to see which letter. So if the choice dot equals A, we are going to return the price of a dollar twenty-five. Oh, sorry. All right, we don't use the dollar sign because we just have a double. All right, else if choice is equals to B sorry this should be double quotes because we're using strings apologize all right so if choice is equal to a routine return a dollar 25 if it's equal to B we're gonna return a dollar 75 so this is where we have our if else branch all right so else if now we do C if it's equal to C then we're gonna return two dollars else if it's return choice is equal to D then we're going to return dollar fifty five spelled choice wrong so be careful guys you know work slow make sure you're spelling everything right Else if our choice is equals to E, then E was how much? 85 cents. Return 0 0.85. And then finally, else, we're just going to return price. All right, so I got to move this up one. All right, because remember, price was price was negative one in the beginning price was negative one so we actually should so this is one way you could do it but it's gonna benefit benefit us later when we calculate change if we also make price equal to a dollar twenty five all right, so here price would be a dollar seventy-five because we're gonna have to calculate the change at the end. All right, so price is equal to two dollars. 
All right, our price is equal to a dollar fifty-five. Our price is equal to zero point eight five. So all of this is going to benefit us in the end. Instead of typing return here, I could have just said return price, but you know I wanted to take you all through using not the variable but just the number in the return call. All right, so if we take a look at the lab, um, we have done everything here. We've used our its if statements. So now we've done this. You will need to store the result of this method into a variable in the main method. All right, so how much money do you have? And then we're going to call. What we're going to do is we're going to say the name of this. So we want to call this. We want to find out how much money they have. And then we want to call this method by just calling this down here. Oh, like so. All right, so we're calling that method. And out of this method, we're going to get a price. See, return $1.25, return $1.75. So we have to store that. It's going to return a number to us. So I have to say double um, candy price is equal to whatever comes out of that. All right, and we're going to need that information for this last part. So use a method to check to make sure the user can afford this piece of candy. So we're going to do another method now, and it's going to look like this. So public static void dispense, double money inserted, and double candy cost. All right, so I'm just, I'm going to go change cash here to be money inserted. And candy cost is what they want. So I'm just changing this to be consistent with the lab. All right, so when I go up here now, underneath this display choices, you see when I click on that bracket display choices I'm gonna make a method right under it so this will be a method to dispense candy and return change alright this is what this method will do so public static and you can refer to the lab it's right here public static void Void means we're not returning anything. We're just doing a series of procedural actions. So public static void. Then dispense is what they call it. And we have double money inserted. So that's our money. Double candy cost. That's how much we got out of the other method. All right, so in here, we're going to do all our logic for dispensing the candy and getting back the change. So we're just going to take it step by step according to the lab. Check to make sure the user can afford this piece of candy. You will need to pass the cost of the candy and the amount of money to insert it. So we've done that. So we're going to be able to use money inserted and cost of candy. So we need to see if they can afford it. So what does that mean logically? How, how can I use these two variables? How can I use money inserted and candy cost to see if they have enough money? Well, if the money inserted is greater than the candy cost, right? So if they have put in more money than the cost of the candy, then we can move forward. All right, so that's all it's asking you to do. If the amount inserted is greater than the cost of the candy. If they cannot afford it, tell them that they didn't provide you with enough money and return their money. So else, so if they can't afford it, so if means they can, else means they cannot. So I'm going to tell them, um, sorry mate, you too broke. Um, here's your you know what? We could even use that variable by concatenating in money inserted. Money inserted. And if I want to put a dollar sign in front of it, I would just put that here. Here's your money inserted plus back. Thank you. All right. So basically, we tell them they can't afford it. Uh, sorry, mate. You too broke. Here's your and then we even tell them their amount of money back. Thank you. Pretty cool. I think it's cool. 
All right, we go back into the lab. If they do have enough, dispense the candy and indicate return indicate return their change. All right. So if they do have enough money, um, we can just say we can say vending dot dot dot. Here's here's your candy. And then we need to calculate change, right? So double change is equal to the money inserted minus the candy cost. So we calculate how much change they get. Here's your, and then let's give them their change. So we calculated their change. Now we're gonna tell them what their change in change. I like it. And then maybe let's say please please come back soon. And you know I like to use the hearts. Alright, so we have our dispense method that will see if the amount of money they have inserted is greater than the cost of the candy. If it is, it'll vend it and tell them how much change they get back. Else it'll tell them they're too broke and give their money back. All right, so is there anything else we have to do? I think that's it, guys. We have reached the white point of the lab, so we are done. So at this point, I should have been testing all along, but I do a lot of it. You know, I do this a lot, so I didn't. Um, so the one thing we still need to do, though, is we never called this method. We built the method. So we need to call this. So, you know, just to show you how it connects, I'm going to copy this part. This is called the method signature. So the name of the method and the parameters are the method signature. So if I do this, but then take out the doubles, so take out the types and only have the variable names, then that will call the method. All right. Remember, this method is of type void, which means it's not returning anything. It's just doing things. So we don't have to store it. This one, display choices, had return type double, so we have to store it into a double. This one had return type void. All right, so return type was void, so don't have to store it. All right, this one had return type of the method was double, so have to store it. All right, so let's run it. So what it's going to do is give the welcome statement. It's going to ask them how much money. It's going to call display choices to do the menu and get their choice. It's going to do dispense to give them their candy and calculate their change. So we're going to run it. And welcome to Smitty's Candy Machine. We got the sweetest candy in town. How much money do you have? Uh, so you know me, I got like 95 cents. All right, so I didn't type in cents. I actually typed in dollars. So I'm going to cancel over here. So the red square, and I'm going to rerun it. Um, so 0 0.95. All right, well, here's what I have. Okay, well, let's see. I The only thing I can afford is the Skittles. So I'm going to just type. I'm going to do a lowercase e to make sure our uppercase works. Nice. So vending, here's your candy. And it gives me 9 cents back. Well, what I have, it should have gave me 10. It's doing some kind of crazy math here. Okay, so to fix this, okay, I know what I did. So when I did this, uh, where's the calculate change? So right here is where we calculated change. So money inserted should be 95 minus 85. Huh. That's weird that it gave us a uh, a weird uh, thing like that because it is stored as a double. If we typecast these to double, it may help that. I'm just gonna try it. Um, double. 
We can use something that's called a decimal formatter to give it only two decimal places, but I'm hoping this works. So let's say I have a dollar fifty this time, and I want Snickers. Okay, so that worked a little better, twenty-five cents. Um, let me rerun and do the ninety-five. So zero point nine five, and I want E. Uh, it's still just doing a weird rounding thing, but technically that's ten cents. Um, in class, guys, I'll show you how we can fix that with a decimal formatter, but I didn't, I'm, I didn't want to put that in this video. Um, so, you know, let's just test every scenario. So what if we don't have enough money? Let's say that I have 0 0.50 and I want to buy Twix. Sorry, mate, you two broke. Here's your 50 cents back. Again, to get that zero after the five, I need a decimal formatter. All right, and we'll look at those later. So it looks like everything's working here. Uh, I have $5. I want C, which is Reese's. Here's your change, $3. Again, decimal formatter to add that other zero. All right, so that's it, guys. We have a working vending machine here. Um, I'll probably do a video later on the decimal format just so y'all can see that. Uh, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if you have any questions. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. And of course, if you could always subscribe, like, and share, trying to build up the channel. Um, thank you so much.